Welcome to New Connection, where you can tune in and grow. I'm your host, Vicki Thompson. You may be familiar with New Connection Magazine for Conscious Living, which has been enjoyed by readers in the Pacific Northwest for more than 17 years. Now we're excited to bring New Connection to life in your home with our new talk show. On New Connection, we'll welcome authors, practitioners, and visionaries to share new ideas for alternative health, spirituality, and personal growth. Today, I'd like to welcome to New Connection, Jan Ingle Smith, who's the founder of Light Song School of Shamanic Studies. Jan is also an author, shamanic practitioner, and Reiki master. She's performed more than 2,000 soul retrievals and is considered a leading expert in her field. And today, we're going to talk about shamanism and the law of, tra of attraction. But first, I'd like to talk about shamanism, Jan, hmm. because it's um, a very unique spiritual practice that not everyone may be interested in. So can you share with us, what is shamanism about? Well, the word shaman actually means somebody who sees in the dark with their heart. And so to me, I think of shamanism as a very loving, indigenous um, way of looking at a person which is that they are a divine light and something that's come around today for kind of a new age thought but it's actually been around for centuries and um, it's dealing with the soul as being a divine aspect of actually who you are and so that all healing then comes through the soul or through your spirit and so that's what I do I work with people's energy um, which I'm also calling soul or spirit, kind of the words are synonymous in this. So, so it's the, there's a perception that shamanism might be a Native American tradition, mm -hmm. but it seems to be something that we use practically um, in modern society. Yes, in fact, um, the trademark that I've uh, gotten for the school is 21st century shamanism in energy medicine. It is global. It, what I teach is actually called core shamanism. And what that means is that if you were to go to every country on the planet and look at how people um, did their healing in the beginning, there's aspects that are all the same. And so we don't follow a particular tradition or uh, it's not Native American. It's Native American is part of it, but so is South American and African and Australian, European, you know, the Celtics, all that type of thing. Um, and so there's not a tradition and so people can really empower themselves by making it what they want it to be for them by just lear learning the foundation of how to move energy and my whole thing Vicki with um, my work is to get people empowered I really think that that is 21st century shamanism and it's got to move away from so much the hands of the practitioner and into people and really empowering them to make make them feel really how incredibly powerful they are instead of you know some of the ways that people do feel beat down and and disempowered or powerless and so I emphasize that a lot and um, and I think again shamanism has got sometimes a an odd um, maybe connotation to it but I I have found that it's a big umbrella for many many healing arts that are out there um, even just developing your psychic ability and your awareness, your sensory awareness is all part of getting in tune with the truth of who you are and not, um, you know, something different from that. And to me, that all falls under shamanism. Uh, you can use the skill and apply it just about anywhere. So, so that's where shamanism and the law of attraction yes. can come together. Yes. And you have used a beautiful example of... Um, comparing uh, the law of attraction to tuning forks, yes, which uh -huh. I thought was a really powerful way mm -hmm. to understand how it works. So can mm -hmm. you uh, tell us, how does the law of attraction work and sure. the resonance? Sure. Well, law of attraction, the, the law states that everything is likened to its own kind. And so the example of the tuning forks, I think, is great because what happens is if you use an illustration of having a tuning fork, let's say, that is the note A, and at the end of a football field, you have another tuning fork, which is also A. If you hit this tuning fork, the one at the end of the football field will begin to vibrate because that attraction is there. It's the same note, and, it's, and it goes and it starts to vibrate the opposite one. Whereas if you had A at this end 
and G down here, you can hit this one all day and it's not going to make this vibrate because it's not the same frequency. And that's another part that um, I really see that we, we need to start using the words like frequency and vibration because that's really what we are. We're a frequency, we're vibrations, and we're a very high frequency of vibration. And things that are a match to us, they make us feel good, and things that are not a match to us don't make us feel good. And so that's mm -hmm. how I, and, and also bringing together, you know, law of attraction is something that people are really getting to understand now. There's a lot of wonderful material out on it. My book that I wrote actually has got a lot of information in there on it. And people tend to keep things separated, like, well, shamanism over here, law of attraction over here, Reiki over here, all these things are separated. And what I'm trying to do in, in the school is to say, these are all the same thing. You know, when you learn how to operate with this, within these, um, the, the skill, you know, develop this skill, you then are in control of what you're creating because the law of attraction tells you you're in control of what you're creating. And so I'm just trying to show people how to move energy instead of like not knowing how to do that, you know. Well, it seems like with our physical body, we have vibrations that interact with our phys physical body. Yes. And you call it a broadcast tower. Mm -hmm. A broadcast tower, yeah. Of energy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about how that works in our physical body and how we become those towers of energy? Sure. Um, in your body, you have um, <laughs> my little drawings. You have to excuse my, I have clip art talent on the computer. So. Oh, they're perfect. And, anyway, so. As, as you see on the monitor there, um, there's chakras in your body, and I only have three on the, on the picture, but actually there's, you know, seven, and actually there's 147 in the body, but most people just work with these seven, the, the basic ones in, through the body. And they are spinning and broadcasting energy, and that then goes out into the other fields that are around you, and some people would call those auric fields or some people would call those electromagnetic fields like if you're in the sciences but they are fields of energy that are around you and they're filled with what is broadcast out from the chakras and so in your chakras you hold your beliefs you hold in, in a in a perfect form and if you if you would never had any problem you would have perfect chakras that broadcast what they're supposed to which is a very beautiful divine energy but unfortunately you know we don't live in that perfect kind of world and our wounds also get caught in our chakras um, faulty beliefs or uh, fears can get caught in there and then they broadcast out into your auric fields too and they and then that's part of your broadcast but um, in shamanism we work a lot with non-physical beings and um, allies, spirit allies, and I asked him one time, I said, you know, how do we look to you? Like, you know, we're always looking to see how you look to us. How do we look to you? And they showed me this image, and there's no body there. It was just this amazing um, broadcast of energy that, that each person is. So just energy radiating out. Uh -huh. And in your yes. drawing, you show um, the four energy fields uh -huh. around the human body. Uh -huh. So that's your auric field. Those are your auric fields, and you know they're the physical, the etheric, the mental, the emotional, and the and the spiritual. And um, in shamanism, we tend to like to work in that spirit field because when the spirit is adjusted, when when that is brought into alignment with itself, actually, the energy then percolates down through and all the other fields are then taken care of. And um, that's why I think that it's such a wonderful healing modality because everything does get touched with a spiritual um, uh, healing of some sort. So <clears throat> it's starting on the outside and moving down through. Mm -hmm. um, so our thoughts mm -hmm. can create vibrations in our energy fields. Absolutely. Um, how does that work with the law of attraction? Right. So one of the things that's the most important thing, I think, to remember is that our thoughts and our words are energy. They are frequencies of vibration. And so when, you know, people can feel very disempowered and think, well, 
you know, how can I do a healing on myself? How can I be well when I don't know how to do these traits, you know, these skills or whatever? And to me, when you are when you are actually thinking positive thoughts or speaking positively, what you're actually doing is you are drawing positive things to you. And to me, that's actually how a soul retrieval works, which is what I specialize in, in that when you're, when you're up in a positive place, you actually have the power to bring part of your soul pieces back in. And vice versa, when you're in a negative place, you can actually be losing part of yourself. And so the law of attraction is going to say that you're going to draw to you what you're vibrating, what your frequency is. And so if you have, have a very high frequency within, and you will then draw to you the good things to you that, that are also a high frequency. And the law of attraction is working regardless if you get it or not. I mean, it's one of those laws. It's it's like gravity. You know, gravity works. You don't know have to know the mathematical formula for it. You don't have to, you know, know the the speed of it. It's working. You know, throw something up, comes down. It keeps us on the planet. It keeps the universe in order in the orbits. And the law of attraction is the same thing. The law of attraction is a creative energy. You're creating um, uh, with your words and with your thoughts. In fact, I learned one time from a teacher that the word uh, ab abracadabra actually means I create what I speak. Uh, interesting. Because uh -huh. I think, you know, oftentimes we might be driving on the road. We might be under stress at work mm -hmm. having lots of tasks that we have to complete. And we may lament, oh, I just don't have enough time to get my work right. done. Yeah. I. I'm too busy, I'm too rushed, or I'll never get it all done. Are we creating things yes. as we say those? Absolutely. The element of time, actually I put three things in the same category, time, love, and um, uh, money, in that it's all in a scarcity thought form, a huge scarcity thought form. I mean, if you think about how many people a day think, I don't have enough money, or I don't have enough love, or I don't have enough time. That thought form, which is just gathered pockets of energy with a program in them, is hovering above us. It's hovering. So as soon as you go into that thought process, it's like you're intravenously hooking into it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you can create quickly with that kind of power behind you, but you're creating what you don't want. You're creating more of I don't have. And so um, part of the law of attraction and healing is, is that you want to make statements that are true, that you are going to um, vibrate an awareness. You're gonna, your frequency, your feelings are gonna be a match for what you're saying. And so if you don't have enough time, you could make a game out of it and say, well, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm on time and I get so much done in one day. I always feel great when I have those kind of days. And so you go off and you start thinking about that instead. And all of a sudden you're feeling great about how you do that. Well, you're going to create more time for yourself. Definitely. Time is a very elusive thing. You can, you can play with it a lot and you can alter it. So. I think that's good news for a lot of people that yeah. you, yeah, to have that positive moment of, I do, I do have enough time. You do and have I can enough be time. In that flow. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. You have another process called soul retrievals mm -hmm. that you also use to help people to, uh, I guess, get in a better position to attract. Yes. How does that work? Well, um, one of the things that I have done for many years, in fact, since I've been a practitioner, is that I do a guided meditation before uh, the person goes, we, we do the soul retrieval. And the spirits had guided me to do this, and I, I never really knew why I was doing it, except that they seemed to be very relaxed and very opened. And as the years went on, I realized what was happening was that there, what was, I was being able to get them to just broadcast their divinity. And so the way that I do that is, is um, through steps of the meditation. In fact, they're part of the CDs that um, I have 
available for people now. And it, through prompts, brings a person into an awareness of their magnificence. And when they are feeling that magnificence, when they're just sitting there in the chair and they're just like, wow, do I feel good, that is actually a vibrational match for their soul. Because the, the soul is divine, it is perfect energy. It has no black marks, it has no demerits, it has no anything that went wrong with it. It left because of the problem. And when we bring a soul piece back and a soul retrieval, you're getting back the divine energy. And so if I can get that person broadcasting at this really high level, it's like the soul pieces just start coming into them. And so I have realized through my own work that these things are not separate. They are working all the time. And that's actually how I do extractions then too, with getting things out of a person is um, using the law of attraction. I use it all the time in my work and in my life. I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm thinking about it 24 seven, you know. To for, pull into the power of the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned soul extractions. Mm -hmm. um, is that different from retrieval? Yeah, it's not a soul extraction. You're, you're actually extracting an intrusion that has gotten into your soul. So let's say that, you know, you've had a lot of um, things happen in your life and you feel bad about it. You know, you've got anger in there, you've got um, sadness or grief or something like that. Those are very low frequency energies, all right? And the reason that we know that they're low frequency is because you feel bad, all right? The body is always gonna tell you how things are. And when it's feeling bad, it's saying, Whatever you're doing, whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're exposing yourself to is not good here. And so it's going warning, 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 because eventually the body will break down. And that's how in shamanism we see illnesses. There's no label for diabetes or fibromyalgia or heart attack. It's all because your energy is not in alignment with its truth. And so in an they develop what we call intrusions. And an intrusion makes your whole body be out of alignment or your whole energy system be out of alignment. And so in an extraction then, what we're doing is we're going in and we're getting that energy to come out. And I don't ever call this energy bad or negative because to me it's, it's just a lower vibration. It's a vibration that is not a match for you. And so I don't go to war with it. I don't you know, try to grab it and take it out. But what I do is I invite it to go home. I invite it to go where it is matched. And so I create a win-win situation then with my intention and it always works. I mean, the, the, the helpers come in and the energy then wants to leave because it, it's caught in a system that's not a match for it either and it wants to leave and so it goes and um, it restabilizes the system, your system or whoever I'm working on. Yeah. So that also too ties back into the law of attraction Absolutely. and what you are attracting and that it's time for it to go home. Mm -hmm. You have another thing that you talk about called um, dreaming a new dream. Yeah. And tell me about that and how sure. that works with the law of attraction. Well, dreaming a new dream is another one of the CDs that is in this three pack that I have. and and. It's based on when people don't want something to happen or they're angry at something that did happen. Um, they're, you know, politics is a big one, of course, or um, you know, different things that we have going on in the United States or in the world. They then express anger towards the problem. Well, anger is a low frequency energy. And when you're expressing anger, what you're doing is creating more anger. Can you explain mm -hmm. low frequency? Because I don't know if everyone is familiar with low frequency energy versus high frequency energy. Well, again, high frequency energy, what I can explain about it is it's a match for the soul. And when you're doing things that are a match, they will always feel good. So if you're saying things, thinking things, um, 
doing things that are a match in a high frequency range, they will feel good in the body. Okay, you become expanded, you feel joyous, you feel um, creative, and all kinds of possibilities are there. When you are entertaining lower frequency thoughts or words, you collapse. I mean, I could sit here and say some really negative things and both of our bodies would start to go concave and we'd feel bad. Our energy fields are collapsing and our chakras are going way down. So can you really see, when you look at an auric field, does it, rather than being bright and flowing, does it really just start to kind it of does. go gray or just doesn't shine anymore? How, how? Well, you can, you can catch it on, um, you know, Krillian photography and stuff, but in my classes what we do, because we don't have those cameras, is you just hold your hands over someone's head and have them start thinking thoughts and you can feel what happens to the energy. You can feel it go down. Um, you can feel it get uh, maybe cold or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so absolutely that's what happens. And so anyway, going back to the question of uh, the law of attraction and dream the new dream. So if you're, if you're angry and you're, and you're spewing out this anger towards something, again, you're going to create more of the problem um, the spirits downloaded this beautiful example of that to me, and I don't think I, I brought you a picture of it, but I'll try to explain it here in a minute. So dream the new dream then is instead of focusing on the problem, we want to focus on the solution. And in focusing on the solution, and you might not even know what the solution is, but you know qualities of the solution. People are happy. Children are educated. There's you know, health care for people, there's, there's good schools, there's, you know, a better environment, all of the, those are qualities that we're looking for. And so if you can keep your vibration high, filled with joy, filled with enthusiasm, filled with op optimism, that is a match for those qualities. So that's dreaming the new dream. Dream the way that you want it to be, but feel it. The thing with the, uh, the law of attraction that bo most people don't understand is that it's the frequency of feeling. They think, well, I'm thinking the positive thoughts, I'm saying the positive words, but things still aren't working because they're not feeling the, um, the, the level of, in their frequency isn't a high enough to be able to attract it because they're still maybe broadcasting the belief, I really don't believe this, these are just words. Okay. So how do you feel it? How do you dream your dream and really feel it and use mm -hmm. your emotions to help with that creation? Well, on the CD, what I do is I take people through prompts and I bring them to this place where they're broadcasting really high, the same that I did with the Soul Retrieval. And then from there, they're prompted to really engage in their dream, where they're tasting it, seeing it, smelling it, feeling it, like they're in it. And they're just enjoying they're enjoying where they are. And at that level, when they're broadcasting like that, just comes right in as, as a match. It has to, because the law of attraction will tell you that that's the way it's going to work. And that comes off of you. You have a three CD set called mm -hmm. Awaken, Unburden, Unburden and Create. create. Uh -huh. And there's three CDs in there. There's one called The Brilliance of You, which is just, just to get people used to feeling brilliant, feeling wonderful about themselves where they can lay back and sit back and just listen to something and the prompts will take you through it. Um, and then the other one is the same process only now the prompts are going to be about calling back your soul pieces and then the next one is the same prompt or different prompts but same process and this time we're going to dream a new dream about ourselves. And what are our soul pieces? Soul pieces um, are parts of your divine energy that split off from you from some sort of trauma. So, and trauma is different for all kinds of people. I mean, some people, you know, they're traumatized in abuse and another person might be traumatized in third grade and feel like, you know, crawling in a hole of embarrassment, okay? But it sticks with you. And it sticks with you because actually part of your divine energy leaves at that moment. And this is actually a um, human behavioral uh, uh, ability that we have to take care of ourselves. Because if you can see that something 
awful is happening, you don't want to be really present for it. You want to be able to numb out. And so psychology calls this disassociation. You disassociate from the situation. And in shamanism, we call it uh, soul loss. And so once those soul pieces are gone, some people know how to get them back. Sometimes they'll come back spontaneously through growth and life. And some people, they don't come back. And so that is where a practitioner would go in and find those pieces and literally blow them back into you. Mm -hmm. um, the reason I created the CD series, though, is because not everybody is going to be attuned to shamanism or be in the hands of a practitioner, or even want to be. But they still can have the resources to call some of those pieces back. And um, to me, to stay really healthy, really healthy, you have to be taking care of your energy system. It is primarily who you are. And so I try to give people as many tools as I can to say, spend some time each day and filling yourself back up, filling yourself up with divine light. And divine light feels good and it's full of positive words. So. I think it's a really powerful process, Jan. And thank I really you. want to thank you for being with us sure. today yeah. and sharing with us these wonderful tools to help us to grow. Thanks. So I'd like to invite you all to join us next time on New Connection, mm -hmm. where you can tune in and grow. Thank that you. was it. Well.